Yes. I was just going to say, if you turn it around, it'll be coming out. This, this is the direction. Thanks, Joe. There's some over here. Questions over here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Just face it. What do you think would be the average weight for kids our age? You know, I ha I'd have to look at the, uh, the BMI tables, but when you go to the pediatrician or your doctors, they, they, have, they have growth charts. And it, 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 in children, because you're growing, it's... it's, it's
food industry, it does bring up a point that the food industry is um, interested in selling food and less interested in our health. There were some similar points in that movie also. Yes? Um, how come if some people eat like the same amount of food, some people store more body fat than others? So that's, you're more or less sensitive to carbohydrates. So your metabolism is either sensitive or not sensitive in terms of storing body fat. Everyone's different, and, and, that, and I've heard that question several times, and we have yet to quantitate that. I think once we learn how to quantitate how people respond to food macronutrients that we consume, we'll, we'll have some new science there and, and, and new dietary guidelines in terms of you're insulin sensitive, you're not insulin sensitive, based on that, this is the kind of food that you should eat. This is the kind of food that you should eat. But we're not there yet. We're still learning. So yes, human patient. Um, what would you say are diets? So your eating habits, great. Um, you should, after today's talk, you should think about eating healthier carbohydrates. I think that's this, the single message that you want to bring home to your families that the refined and processed carbohydrates are unhealthy for us, and perhaps discuss um, the fat hypothesis, hypothesis with your family, that um, some scientists said a long time ago that fat was bad for you your diet. Dr. Gerber said it's really not that bad. In fact, it could be a healthy thing. Can you give them some examples of the carbs that you consider to be unhealthy and the ones that are healthy? Because I think they may be lost in that. Right, so um, I don't eat many carbohydrates. Um, I, I eat carbohydrates that are whole grain. Um, um, some of the healthier fruits are the berries, but I, uh, they have a lower glycemic index. And, um, but I, I, I tend to not eat a lot of fruit. Um, we eat uh, uh, vegetables that have a lot of fiber in it. But what's different with my diet is when I make a vegetable, I'll put fat on top of it, such as coconut oil or olive oil or even butter to make it a nutrient-dense food. So, you know, we all don't like to eat our vegetables, but if you put some nutrient-dense things on top of it, um, it makes it more tasty. Or in a salad, we put a protein, such as you can put fish, um, chicken, tofu, beef, whatever you want. You put your protein on top of it, and you put a, a salad dressing that, that has very little sugar in it and that becomes a healthy meal. Are those good examples? Yes, could you talk about um, like almonds and walnuts, other types of nuts? Yes, so nuts, actually in my picture, I tried to illustrate some of the foods that are, that are healthy for us. And so nuts, particularly unsalted nuts, um, um, again, not the we want um, unprocessed nuts. Um, those are very healthy, they're nutrient dense. Um, Nuts have the healthy monounsaturated fats. So I think that an avocado, and so that's that's a nice example of just the slide there at the end showing some of the foods that we want you to eat more of. And um, you know, it would be uh, you know perhaps your parents can make food for you to, to bring to lunch. And you know, it's a shame that the school districts around the country run out of money. And it, you know, it'd be nice if we could focus on nutrition in school. Uh, a little bit more, but we have to deal with the hands that are dealt. So. Yes? So we know that sometimes it's So um, eventually your pancreas stops producing insulin. And at the end of this condition, you need insulin. That's, that's the first condition. The second condition is that you guys may know some, some of your friends that are diabetic taking insulin. And that's type 1 diabetes. That's a different type of uh, condition where the person is born and the pancreas doesn't make any insulin. So that's two cases where you need insulin. Yeah? What's the average length of time that you deal with one of your patients? Um, it's, it's long. It, to me, it's lifelong. So, you know, when I, when I, when I meet a patient um, as a family doctor, the goal is to have the patient for years. And so we're treating this just like we treat their high blood pressure or their cholesterol. It's a, it's a lifelong goal. It's not a long term, short term goal. But some people lose weight faster, some people lose weight slower. Yes? Yeah. Um, what would be some of the suggestions of the blood group? Of the blood group? I'm not sure there's any superfoods of the brain. 
there, there are other superfoods that are antioxidants coming from, say, some fruits and vegetables. But um, grain, I'm not certain how to call it. Oh, oh, really, really healthy foods. Yeah. So, so again, extremely healthy foods would be animal-based foods. Again, um, you know, protein derived, um, vegetables, food, high fiber foods. So, you know, your vegetables have fibers, things like that. But you know, you've heard that term, superfoods, and and a lot of people are saying, well, some of these. Um, High sugar foods such as pomegranate is a superfood. And if there are some antioxidants and properties to it, but the problem is there's also sugar. And so does the sugar offset the positive benefit of that superfood? So, yes? So, yes, you can. And that's basically what a type 1 diabetic is. Their, their pancreas doesn't function. And so they have to get insulin from uh, an external source. What's interesting is they're trying to create uh, an artificial pancreas for um, type 1 diabetics so they don't have to give themselves insulin. insulin. So it's an external device that it, it, it can sense the blood sugar, it can administer insulin, and it functions all by itself. Right now, a type 1 diabetic has instruments that they have to play with and adjust to uh, give themselves insulin. But type 1 diabetics, before we understood insulin, children would uh, basically die in the 1920s before insulin was discovered. So, yes? Um, I heard that like dark green vegetables help with cancer, like prevent cancer. Right, so superfoods. So there, there may be some antioxidant properties. Question? Uh, I used to watch The Biggest Loser and every single person out there had like some emotional story or something that was why they were bad. How many of your patients are like that? Well, I think that that's, that's a large part of it. Um, actually, we can argue that when you develop insulin resistance, I said it affects your brain chemicals, and you get varying levels in, in brain chemicals called serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine that can affect mood. So that's that's a large part, and we have to address that with our patients. Question up front? Anyone else have a question for Dr. Gerber? We have time for about two more. Two more. Lady in the pink. I saw your hand go off. No? Okay, change your mind. Come back? No? Okay. I need to see some people before we leave to this regards talent show stuff. Okay, so this is coming from Miss Jaworski. Um, Labby K, there's a little note for you. Maddie M, note for you. 